Okay, um, maybe some of you guys are going back to school. Uh, I, know, I believe Buddha is going back to Guelph, right? Yeah. Guelph. Yeah, the agriculture. Uh, they're milking cows. <laughs> no, um, yeah, Buddha is going back to Guelph. And uh, many people are going back to Toronto. Okay. Uh, but you're commuting though, right? Okay, you're commuting, so we'll see you. And Joshua, you'll be going back to Toronto as well. So it will be last week. Yeah, so too bad. Um, anybody going back to Waterloo? London? They already went? That's good. Uh, good to see you guys again. And uh, yeah, well, we, we are having a, a barbecue, not the barbecue party. It is barbecue, it's considered as barbecue, right? So we're going to have a hot dog, and I'm going to barbecue it. So it's a the best part of the I think it's last week uh, we went to this place called Alora Gorge and it was just wonderful, wonderful place. Uh, those people didn't go, you missed out a lot. At the first time going there, it was just like unreal. It's so good. It's just it's surrounded with uh, this, this, uh, this rocks and the water is uh, clean and you can actually go up in the cliff and jump off and uh, we had a really great time. And we just forgot to bring buns, so we have a lot of buns. <laughs> That's why we are having another barbecue. Okay? So we're gonna finish up with uh, uh, yes. uh, we got the extra sausage, sausage. So please stay with us. Uh, we're gonna have a little picnic upstairs. I mean, uh, we have a, a soccer field, a little picnic area. So please don't go right away. Stay with us. That'll be really, really awesome. And, um, uh, Joseph, John just mentioned about um, the, the Big Story Conference. Uh, we're going to keep on making that announcement. It is a, a, we're doing it for the very first time. We never really had this kind of, um, uh, the this, this scale is like so big. And we're expecting to have about 400 people. Yeah, and that, is, that is a big conference. We never really had, to tell you the truth, we never really had our own praise since since like I don't know, I've been here, never really had a praise like, like we need, never really had anything a praise night or our own conference. Um, but somehow uh, God uh, just led us into this on uh, organizing this big event. Uh, we call it the Big Story Conference. Um, we have this speaker from California, and some of you guys probably know him, and some of you guys probably have read his book already. Uh, he bought, uh, he wrote a number of books. And is really good at um, explaining about this evangelism, uh, the gospel. Uh, so it, it's a very effective way, and it's, we can really uh, relate with our modern culture. So it is it is beneficial for you guys to come, and I encourage people to eat, uh, invite everybody you know, uh, so we can have this conference. We can share that. Um, yeah. So we've been preparing for for a long time speaking to the speaker and you know, plan it out and right now it's one and a half not even one and two weeks left and it's very uh, you know, we, we, it's, it's a very last uh, we, we need to prepare uh, uh, more and we need your prayer uh, just like Joe, uh, John mentioned we really need your prayer and we really need your support on this so please uh, help us out uh, in your prayer and you can come out on Wednesday night where we're, we're doing stuff preparing it so we can come out. Uh, we still need a lot of volunteers, so please. Uh, we set up the online registration, uh, and it's not it's not free, uh, it's $40. Uh, and hey, everything that has value in it, it's worth it. Uh, so uh, please, uh, go to thebigstory.com, thebigstory2016.com or something like that, and please register and invite many people as possible. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let's uh, open up uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 36 to 37. Let's open up the Bible. Uh, Acts chapter 4, uh, verse 36 to 37. And we're going to read it. Just two verses. Acts chapter 4, 36 to 37. Let's read it together. Three, two, one. 
Joseph, Levi from Zacharias, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold the field he owned, brought the money, and put it at the apostles' feet. Amen. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. Barnabas is, is the actual nickname. Uh, many people know him as Barnabas, but his real name is Joseph. Barnabas is, is his nickname. It literally means a son of encouragement. The Greek word for encouragement in this uh, is the word uh, paraklate. That is used of the Holy Spirit and literally means one called alongside to help. One who called alongside to help. So Holy Spirit is with us, is with us, para, is alongside with us, guiding us, counseling us, and giving us that advisors and, and helping us, encouraging us. Uh, the, in the same way, Barnabas' role was like that uh, in the early church community. He was known for being alongside to help others, always making himself available uh, for those people who are in need, you know, helping out people, taking care of those people, and that's why he came up with this nickname, Barnabas, the son of encouragement. Uh, verse 37, uh, in Noah, um, he sold a field he owned and he brought the money and put it at the apostles' field. In this passage, and this is the way how he encouraged people. He sold his property and he sold it and, and he made the money and, and put it at the apostles' field. He donated it. He gave all to the, uh, the community. But why he did that? For what? And why is that so encouraging to people in the church? Let's, let's go through this. And you guys probably remember, by the way, we are going back to the Acts series. Because the last three, four weeks, we, we've been dealing with this, this sin, or uh, repentance. But we are going back to the Acts series, and uh, we want to study the Acts together. Okay. It's a very long book, but uh, you know it will take a time, but we will go through. Uh, you guys remember that great revival had broken out on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem. And many people had come to know uh, Jesus Christ. Every day people were added up, the number were added up. And after uh, Peter spoke in public, 3,000, 5,000 people, they, 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 they came to Jesus Christ. They, they were joining this early church community. So it was a, a very powerful movement. It was explosive uh, revival happened at the time. But they had an issue, um, because they had a lot of people, so many of them, and among those people, uh, they had a lot of uh, people who are in need, the orphans, widows, the people with a disability, and they were thinking, like, how can we help them out? How can we take care of them? See, the early church, they were not exclusive at all. They were not exclusive uh, club, you know, setting a bar and, hey, you're not good enough, and you're not rich enough, you're not uh, smart enough, you're not strong enough. It's not like that. They were opened up. They are welcoming anybody, anybody who want to be Christian, who want to uh, follow Jesus, Jesus Christ. You are all welcomed, okay? So uh, they're all welcomed. There are so many people, especially those people who are in need, the widows orphans, the people with disability. Uh, so they are poor, they didn't have a lot of money, uh, and the apostles and the leaders in the church, uh, they were fully guided by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit challenging them and, and giving them this guidance. You gotta help them out. You gotta, you gotta take care of them. They're part of your community, they're your family, you gotta take care of them. So they've been Guided by the Holy Spirit, they, they have this ministry. See, one of the main early church ministry that they had was helping out those poor, those, those people who are in poverty. So what they did was they're collecting the, uh, you know, the resources, then, and they distributed food, clothes, you know, providing shelters. And you know what? The ministry was really successful. You know, how we know? Verse 34, chapter 4, 34, it says this. There were no needy persons among them. And this is like, wow. And all the money and resources, they were all like very well managed and fairly distributed. And people were satisfied and nobody were complaining about this. There are no needy persons among them. And it was 
wonderful, great ministry they have. But think about it, like how much? Like we don't know, but how, where do they get this money? They must be they spending a lot of money. Think about it. They're having a, I don't know how many exactly they have, but they must have a lot of people. More than 20,000, 30,000, who knows, right? And taking care of those many, many people and just doing the, uh, the ministry, they need money for it. And how can uh, provide all that? How can they supply all that? And verse 34 says, But there are no needy persons among them, for from time to time those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and this is how they provide themselves. They were given, givers. They're people who can give out. They're donating money to the church. The, you know, bringing down the apostles' fed, meaning that they're submitting it and expecting them to the fairly use it. It was done by their offering. It was done by their donation. So they can successfully do their ministry. And this is incredible if you think about it. It's, it's really hard to, uh, you know, have, have, you know, put it in our own context. The people sold their land and houses and brought money from the sales and money were equally distributed among people. It's just a perfect ideal model for communism or socialism. It was possible. It was only possible because of the Holy Spirit and because of His guidance. And it's not by human intelligence. You know, we know for, for a fact that history tells us you know, communism doesn't really work because it's just all depending on the, the human intelligence, their, their own philosophy, and it doesn't work good. But at that time, it was perfect because they were fully guided by the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit and people's willingness to follow His guidance and it's all worked out. So they had a really beautiful community of God in the early church. But still, like, can you imagine yourself selling your stuff, your house, your, your, uh, your car, your iPhone, your, your precious stuff, whatever that is. And nobody really owns a house. Right? What about that? What's your most precious thing that, that you owe right now? Money? Whatever. Car? What is the most expensive thing that you, you owe? Andrew, what, what do you have? You, you seem to be a very rich guy. <laughs> <laughs> what is your most precious, most valuable uh, possession that you have? My car. Your car. that their idea of money in, in the early church and those people 
I mean, they were Jews. They have reputation being so cheap, so materialistic. They love money. They're Jews. It's not just like in, even in the early church, they were, they, they're so, you know, they value money. And they know exactly how important that is. Can you, can, I, can you go through it? There's a picture of a Jewish guy. <laughs> <laughs> not the Bible. They're Vietnamese. This is a picture. Uh, this is the how, how they portray uh, Jews. Uh, you know, even medieval time or even most uh, modern days. We think of Jew as, and hey, they are they love money. They're so materialistic. Those people who are Jews in the early church, all the leaders, apostles, they are Jews, but they were different because of the Holy Spirit. It was so powerfully uh, guiding them, controlling them, and they were following, guided by the Holy Spirit, and they were so different, completely different uh, from this this worldly standard. The way they spend money, the, the, the way they value money, it's, it's very different. Their first prior purpose for making money is not for themselves, not for them to accumulate so that it's, so they can have better future, having the better security or something, or having the pleasure with this money. It was not their perspective. Their money is, is for bettering, expanding the kingdom of God, and taking care of poor and a community. Their position is not their own. They're sharing it. The idea of communism and the idea of social, socialism. You know, they can't even sell their houses and land. This is just incredible. You know, people with the Holy Spirit, they can do this kind of thing. Giving up those things. For us, this, this is the most hard, most difficult part uh, that we can do. Giving up our wealth. Sacrifice and all that. It's very, very hard. But they did it. Well, there are a lot of givers uh, in the early church. In the midst of uh, all those givers, Joseph, the Barnabas, his name and nickname, and his, even his background is, is, is honorably mentioned here. So he was a great role model uh, in, in this community. Being the encourager that he was. Okay, he, he took a valuable piece of property he sold it and gave it to the apostles to meet the needs of the people. That's what he did. <coughs> you see, encourager, the man of encouragement. That's, this is what they do. They see a need among people. It's not just me. It's not, not just like our own family. They see a need in community and meet the need. At that time, money is really, really needed, and he sacrificed his financial monetary projection for the community of God. But you know what? Um, I don't want you to get the idea that you have to have money to be like Barnabas. You have to be uh, like Barnabas. You have to give up everything to be honored in the community of God. It's not the idea. Again, I don't want you to sell your car. I don't want you to sell your houses, whatever that, that you are valuing too much, so much. I don't want you to do it. Just be faithful to your tithe and offering. That will be sufficient for now. If, you're, if you have a talent of a giving, go ahead. But if you don't, don't do it. You know, you may not be a rich you don't have money. You don't have to do it. But it doesn't mean that you can't you can be the people of encouragement. There are many ways you can contribute. There's many ways you can share your talents and your, your own resources. Everyone, every single one of us have those kind of talent. We have so much talent, so much gift. And we can share that and give to others as a gift of encouragement. So don't just limit it with this material thing. Well, sick people, what do they need? Uh, they need a word of concern. They need uh, your prayer. It's more than money. 
lonely people, they might need a, a few minutes of your time. The suffering, uh, hurting people, they just need your encouragement, just, just uh, you know, a touch on their shoulder or a high five or a big smile on your face. That could be arranged. Everyone can give encouragement in their own way. But the thing is, we are obligated to give. We're obligated to encourage. And God honors that. You know, as you guys know, every Wednesday night we have this open gym. Every Wednesday night we have this, this great time. It's not just for our church, we opened up for community. And uh, it's, it's really nice because we have like Filipinos coming in and Chinese, Vietnamese, you know, we have Jamaican. Now, let's look at this picture. Right. So it's a, what in the left is actually a Jamaican Canadian. So it's really cool. You, you can jump. <laughs> Most of us are uh, Asians, um, yeah, but they're really good, they're really, really awesome. Um, as a multi-ethnic, multi-culture, uh, we have sports ministry, and I love this. You know, you know, you know what, this is exciting, um, I, I just heard the news, there's 70 Syrian refugees uh, settling in Brunton not really far away from our church. And I was asked to help in um, this community center. And they were asking us to, to host an event or having a program so we can, we can be with them. What an amazing opportunity to, to be with them. To, to be with them, to, to encourage them. So I really want to uh, spend time, um, you know, like you know, those people. It doesn't have to be Korean. By the way, we, we don't want to be just Korean church. We, we want to just get out of this homogeneous, this, this Korean dominant uh, community. Like we, we are second gen, third gen, so I wish we can have more ethnic, ethnicity, more diversity uh, in a moment. And, and it's great to see, you know, the Chinese, Japanese, Canadian, thank you for joining us today. But, you know, it's wonderful to see that. We're not just limited and hey, we're Koreans, so we're living in this little island and we eat in kimchi and tenjang together all the time. It's, it's, we have to expand it. Uh, expand it. So anyways, uh, we play uh, volleyball and basketball. We starting at 6 o'clock, 6.30, and uh, some of you guys are coming for basketball. We, we are really good, good at basketball. We are, we're a basketball community. That's, they love, I love basketball. Uh, and then after that, uh, around 9 to uh, 11.30, we play volleyball. We used to play till like 2 o'clock in the morning, but not anymore. Um, so 11.30, so we, we have this really awesome time, and it is a ministry. For me, like I love playing basketball. Right now, my knee is just having a problem, I guess. Uh, I can't, it's, you know, in order for you to play basketball, uh, your knee needs to be in good shape. Like, you, know, you need to make that holistic movement, and your knee has to be strong. I, I'm aging right now, um, so it's just a, it's physically it's it's limiting me. So I don't I, I try not to play. Um, and, and and I was looking for alternative sports, and volleyball was great. Volleyball was really really awesome. Um, and I really love it. And you should have come out and play with us. Um, I really love the sports. I love. I really love the animal sport. First of all, like everyone can play this sports. So basketball is like physical contact. You're sweating. You have to touch. You have to like rub on other people. Like you know, like it's just like you know, uh, yeah. So for some people, finding it's a little gross to play, and it's it's just physical, right? It's aggressive, and but volleyball, everyone can play. Like, Boys and girls, and if you are not good, you can still play. You can, if you're really good, you can, you can still play with them. So it's really wonderful, and it's so very physical, very competitive, and you know, we can have really fun time together. Um, and there's something about bas uh, volleyball is that, that I really noticed, and actually a couple of people spotted it and they shared that with us because we are not really into volleyball, so they're playing. 
those people are, you know, they're, they're playing. They've been playing volleyball for, for a long time, so they know they, they're coaching us. As they're playing, you know, whatever they do, they, in, the, in the beginning, they, what they do is like, high five, high five, high five. There are like six people in the team, right? Every single, and then whatever they do, like spike, if it's successful, they high five, high five, high five, shaking hands, high five. And if they missed it, oh, it's okay. <laughs> so there are a lot of high fives going on, and I was like, I found it really weird, like why they're doing it, they're like, too much. You know, basketball, we don't do it, like, <laughs> that's all we need to do, like once in a while we just do it, just, um, the volleyball is very different, but that's, they encourage the people to do it, and that's one of the, uh, their coaching strategy, and we gotta keep on encouraging people, keep on doing this high five. So I'm learning this, all the uh, high fives and touches that they have. You know, in that way we build up the chem team chemistry. We're building up this team spirit. It's a way. It's a wonderful way to encourage people, and it's a very encouraging atmosphere. And I love it. You know, we need encouragement. We all do. Uh, we are looking forward to have encouragement. Encouragement, the compliment. You know, just acknowledging your worthiness. It just make us feel alive. Let's look at this guy. He said this, I can live for two months in a good compliment. Who is this? Einstein? Anybody know? Albert? <laughs> Mark Twain? Author? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the old guy, the, the, the Harawazi, the grandpa, he said it. So we all need this. Everyone needs to be encouraged. We all need encouragement and affirmation. You know, if you want to be like Barnabas, if you want to be the man of encouragement, you can't be selfish. You can't be self-centered. But you need to be selfless person. You gotta know how to sacrifice your resources, your time, your talents. The encourager, they always try to think how he can bless somebody else. They try to find the opportunity to bless somebody so he can make a positive impact or influence to the people around him. They always try to help others in strengthening somebody else. And that's their role, their character, their traits. Then how can we be like them? How can we be like Barnabas? We need all this, we're looking for Barnabas. How can we be like that? So we're going to watch this uh, movie clip. It's like four minutes long. So let's just uh, sit down and let's watch this. Kid, every time I'm pulling out, he's right there. Man, and someone needs to talk to his parents <laughs> if they're ever at home. What is up with the traffic today? It's and always, every day, this intersection's always crowded. I hate pulling out of here. I need some of these dumb roads. Oh, there's. <laughs> okay, so I'm not even here. Right. Great lady. The princess of parking. Oh, sure. Take the spot. Way to be considerate. Oh, are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Oh. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, it's about time. Let's see, what do I want? Uh, yeah, could I add a cookie to that order? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, uh, no problem, only guy in the world. I'm sure you need your cookie. The world? Your oyster, and he's serving your cookies. Thanks, Thank sir. you so much. Uh -huh. What can I get for you? Uh, yeah, I'll have a tall decaf macchiato. Yeah, sure, no problem. Two, three, eighty-five. And uh, it might take a few minutes here. We've got quite a line, obviously. And thanks for your patience. Great. Yeah, <laughs> great. Great for me. Waiting again. Unbelievable.
the way. What is... What is that? What in the world? Oh, uh, uh. what? What am I supposed to do? How can I? How can I do anything about that? Can I even help with that? I don't. Your copy, sir. Oh. I, I can't. I can't take this anymore. I gotta get out of here. Hey, what? Hey, buddy, come here. We need to wear these glasses. What is this? Uh, yeah, we are naturally <coughs> selfish, born. A sinner. We're a sinner at birth. We're just naturally evil and self-centered. <coughs> In order for us to be like Barnabas, we need to have this glass. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit in one of the ways. In order for our church to be like this early church, we need to be filled with the Spirit of God. If you want to be like Barnabas, if you want to encourage people like that, you got to wear it. Holy Spirit, if, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it will lead you to encourage people. He will lead you to inspire people. He will bl uh, bring blessings to other people. You will break bar barriers for others and build bridges for others. The most amazing things in this is, as you are doing it, in this process, you will be encouraged for yourself as well. You won't be burned out. We, the reason that we are burning, uh, burn out, uh, burn out the, the reason that we are having this depression, we're doing it without this glass, without the Holy Spirit, without the help of it. We try to do stuff with our own, and we don't have the capacity <coughs> because we are sinful, we are so selfish. So brothers and sisters, we want to be like Barnabas. We want to be like this early church. Let's ask the Holy Spirit. Give us these glasses. Give us this, this heart. Give us this compassion. Give us this understanding. So we can be like Barnabas. Let us pray. Yes.